this is going to be the part 3 of Jellyfin server so in the first video I showed you guys how you can install Jellyfin server on your Ubuntu server and in the second one I showed you the most important settings for Jellyfin and uh, this is going to be a video related to adding an external hard drive so you have an external hard drive and you want to put all the media the movies songs whatever you guys have uh, you want to put in the external drive and you want to mount that drive to your Ubuntu server hello and welcome back to my channel so let's get started so first of all I'm going to use the same Jellyfin server here I have this one SDA drive you can see it's 50 GB let me show you again LSPLK if I type this command so you can see it's 50 GB SDA and I'm going to log in this machine using the putty application. Let's log in this and change the user to root. All right. So first of all, I'm going to add another hard drive. So if you have the physical server, you guys know how you can change your hard drive and update. Uh, so in virtual machine, I'm just going to add another drive. So for that, first of all, I'm, I'll need to uh, shut down this machine. So shut down, what is that? So it's gonna uh, reboot in a minute. And then meanwhile, I can go to the settings or I think not can I manage this yeah I can so I'm just gonna click on add and then a hard drive so this one is saying recommended create new yes and then uh, currently we have 50 GB so let's say we're gonna use this for movies or media so let's say 200 GB so you you guys can use even more like 2 terabyte 4 terabyte 10 terabyte whatever you guys want to use so just for example uh, let's say I'm gonna use 100 GB and then click next and it's gonna show me the file name for that disk and drive and then I'm gonna click on finish and then okay Okay, so the machine is power on and I'm gonna just restart this session. Log in. And then first of all, we're going to see if it has detected the new drive we just added. So for that, the command is LSPLK. So uh, the drive, like you can say, the first drive is always detected as SDA. So here should be one SDB. So you can see SDB and 100 GB, what we assign to the new drive. But we have no partition. So you can see under disk SDA, there are three partitions, part, part, part. And under SDA2, there is a boot folder mounted to that one so here we can see which folder is mounted to what partition so for the new drive we have to uh, create partition for this one and then we will create uh, sorry i'll tell you step by step so step number one after adding the drive the step number one is uh, going to be creating the partition so first of all uh, let's check the partitions here uh, F disk, uh, sorry, F disk space minus L, and uh, here we can see all uh, the partitions. So for the path of new drive is dev stb to see the path you type the command F disk space minus L, and then we are going to type the same command F disk and then the path. So you can just simply copy this and paste. And then it will show you another FDisk environment. So you can see welcome to the FDisk utility. And if you guys want to know for the commands, you type M and it will show you all the commands what you can use here. So first of all, make sure you print uh, and see if you have any kind of partition. So here we don't have any partition. So it's just showing me the information related to the disk. To create a new drive, we uh, use N. So here you can see add a new partition. Uh, 
if i say drive i'm sorry i mean actually partition so n to create a new partition so it's going to ask for partition type so i'm going to say primary so use p for primary e for extended and then it's going to select for partition number default is one i'm going to hit enter and then the first sector hit enter and i'm just going to create one partition if you guys want to create multiple partitions you can do that you can just type the size of uh, every partition like let's say 50 and then g if you hit enter it's going to create a drive of 50 gb but i want to use all the space for one partition so i will just hit enter and it will create one partition for me and uh, again i'm gonna uh, type p to see so now you can see i have sdb1 so one means it's uh, a partition so if it's just sdb that means that's the disk and if it's showing uh, if it shows a number so that means it's a partition okay after that uh, in microsoft or i think uh, in the chrome as well you create partition you don't need to save the changes but in fdisk utility on ubuntu server you need to save the changes for that the command is uh, w but you can see one more time here uh, i think it, uh, it it shows somewhere but yeah this one you can see w to write uh, the table disk and exit so I'm gonna type W at hint enter so you can see the partition table has been altered and then uh, also we are exited from the FDisk utility okay so the task one is completed we have created uh, the partition so if uh, I type lsblk you can see sdb1 is created and it's a partition uh, with the whole space okay now uh let me show you one more thing if i type lsblk space hyphen f so we can see here uh the partition uh, file system so it's using ext4 so you can see ext4 ext4 for these two so i will have to create a file system uh, for this sdb it should be ext4 so file system on linux is different than uh, the microsoft in microsoft we use ntfs fat32 uh, in ubuntu server uh, mostly you will see ext4 so i'm going to uh, make this one uh, S sdb1 to be as uh, ext4 so i'm going to type this command mkfs.ext4 and then i'm going to give the path dev sdb1 and then hit enter and then let's check again so here you can see now it has the file system okay so we have completed these two steps uh, the third step is going to be creating a new folder or if you have already a folder in your linux system you can use that okay so i'm going to create a folder uh let's say under var so i'm gonna go into vr folder and let's check how many folder we have here uh we have so many let's go to this one because i know this one is going to be just html okay so i'm going to create a new folder here and uh, let's say mkdir uh, new movies so you can see this folder is created and it's under var www all right so now we are going to mount this folder under stb1 so for that the command is mount and then the path stb1 and then www and then new movies all right and let's check again so here you can see we are able to mount this folder to this one but here we have this problem so every time I ubuntu server reboots the mount point will be gone from from this uh, 
SDB1. To make it permanent, I'm going to give you solution. So you're going to edit a file. So this file is FS tab, file system tab. So nano etc FS tab enter and then in the end you are going to type this so first is going to be the path dev sdb1 and then tab and then here you're gonna type uh, your folder path so for uh in my case it's going to be var www and then new movies and then the next thing you're going to type is uh, the file system which is ext4 and then defaults and then zero and then zero and after that press ctrl x and then y to save so now every time the server will reboot it will automatically be mounted this uh, directory automatically will be mounted to stb1 so we have here new movies uh, folder now let's go to uh, the Delphin server and find out uh, this, this this folder so I'm going to show you everything in this video I know this video is going to be kind of lengthy but very informative okay so I have logged into my Delphin server okay so let's go to the administration dashboard and then under libraries i'm gonna go to add new library content type let's say uh movies and then the folder uh, go back and then let's find var and then www and new movies so this is the folder uh we just created and then okay so whatever movies or music or whatever media we have we copy to that directory it will show up under uh, the jellyfin server so we missed just one thing and that is the permission so if uh, I sh show you here LSLA so you can see the permissions are to root only so we need to change the uh, permissions and sorry the ownership of this folder and the permissions as well so first of all we are going to change the ownership and it's a directory so we're going to use hyphen r and uh, we will use www data and www data to and uh, the path of this one uh, is new movies and then let's check again so now you can see the ownership is changed and also uh, I see this one is misplaced I don't know what is that <laughs> I did that or maybe mistakenly happened that so yeah, this one is not right so when you want to change the permissions you say uh, ch mode and as it's a directory and uh, 755 so 755 means uh, let me show you in the calculator so I can easily so this this is 755 so that means the owner of the file uh, or folder can read write execute but the group can read and execute and public can read and execute then do they are not allowed to write so that means they cannot delete anything or they don't have permissions to write so this is the easiest way i found out to like make other people understand how this ch board work because when you know it you understand everything but it's really hard to explain so they have like uh, this website is the best website so if you are confused about the permissions you can use this ch mode calculator and it's going to show you exact result okay so yeah uh, we are going to change the permissions of uh sorry file path and new movies and then again 
let's check so you can see it's uh, by the way already assigned uh, 755 so um, this is uh, kind of complicated but you can search about this on Google so this is actually 755 if I change this to let's say 777 it's gonna it's gonna be different so see now it's different because it's uh, we we allowed everybody to write we, uh, every group is uh, allowed to write every user is allowed to write and like everybody has all the permissions so let's change back to this and let's check again so now you can see only the owner can write but users and groups can uh, see the data read the data and execute all right so yeah that's all for today and if you have any kind of question you can comment me below and thank you so much again for watching the video and stopping by i'll see you in the next video take care bye bye